up, guys? Welcome into the Up and Under podcast. I'm your host, Hani. Joining me, as always, it's Nishan. Yo. All right, man. We are in the middle of March and kind of a kind of a dry period for the for the NBA in terms of news wise. But I mean, to be honest, in terms of act like things that are actually going on relevant to basketball, sure, it's a bit dry. But in terms of outside of basketball, NBA is. Uh, <laughs> What do they? I forget what they always say. NBA is a, a drama for men. It's whatever. a reality show. Yeah, it's a reality show for men. Basically, that is very true, and we'll we'll go and get to that near the, in a little bit. But basically, now we're at a point now in the season where every team, like we know what every team is, we know who you know who acquired who from the trade deadline and the sort of the buyout market. Now all the teams are focused on ramping up for the playoffs and for some teams to play in tournament which will be happening in a few weeks because we're like, what, there's under just under 20 games that left in the season for most teams. And, man, the competition in the NBA this, year, this season has been very insane. Like, the Western Conference has dramatically shifted, like, basically every other day. The Eastern Conference has changed significantly, like, the contenders, the, you know, the playoff teams. Like, everything is completely different now. We finally have parity. We finally have parity, and you know, I know like for some people, some people they're not really a big fan of it because they're just like, well, now we don't know who what's gonna happen. But that's kind of the exciting part about it, you know. And I think the ratings reflect it. I think this year the ratings are a lot more uh, up compared to previous years. Like again, if you think about this season compared to those Cleveland Golden State seasons, where it was just like there's no point of playing a regular season. Yeah. So I think I think this season has been great. Even if our team in particular has been bad, I will say this season has been great. Yeah, the season itself has been pretty good. But basically, we're at the point now where teams are now different, and it's now time to kind of rank each team post-trade deadline. And, you know, I, I know, we, you know we do our initial predictions of the standings and kind of, you know, run down where we think each team will land. You know, this late in the season, and especially with how tight things are, it's very tough to do that. So we decided to kind of you know, put teams into buckets or put teams into tiers based off of where they are, where we think they are based off of, you know, where, what, what we predict is going to happen with the next 20 games and heading into the playoffs. So obviously we have the, our tiers are going to be as follows. We have our contenders, which are the teams that have the best chance to make it to the finals or win it. We have the teams that are almost there, which means they're like a couple of pieces away from contention, but just not at that championship level yet. Uh, we have the teams that are going to potentially be early exits in the playoffs, so they're going to be teams that are going to make the playoffs that are most likely going to be out past, you know, from the first round. Uh, we have the playoff hopefuls, which is the teams that are scratching and clawing to make it to the playoffs and have a chance to actually make it. And then, of course, we have the bottom of the barrel, the team, the tanking team, the teams that nobody really cares about, except if you are, you know, a fan of the NBA lottery. That's or if you're a fan of those teams. Yeah, basically. I mean, I don't know who, how many fans those teams really have at this moment. You know, it's really tough to sell. I mean, there are a couple of teams, but yeah. It's, it's kind of depressing uh, down there, to be honest yeah, with you. It is depressing. <laughs> it is. But before we even get started, if you haven't really done some, subscribe to the show and all the various platforms. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and of course on YouTube. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss more great episodes from us in the future. Obviously, now that we're doing the, the tiers episode, we... You know, we're going to be getting into the playoff picture as well. We're going to be doing our playoff predictions once, obviously, the playoff teams have been confirmed So and the order and all that stuff. So definitely stay tuned for that uh, in the near future. But starting us off with the first tier, and we have to start at the top. we got to start at the contenders because it's, a little, it's pretty easy for us to kind of predict who's going to be the contenders. And I think this category has shifted after the trade deadline in particular just because, again, with all the crazy movement we have, but basically, there's three teams that we both agree on that are ba- are firmly in the contender window. We got the Phoenix Suns if they're healthy, because after acquiring Kevin Durant, kind of just makes sense that they can have the they literally can have the most lethal offense in NBA history with him, Devin Booker, and Chris Paul. I think the only question with him is can KD and Chris Paul really stay healthy and for a full playoff run? Um, so the Phoenix Suns definitely a lock. The Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, we kind of sleep on Milwaukee just because they've been consistently so good. But, again, they've been consistently good. Uh, I mean, Giannis, now they're the first seed in the East. Yeah, now they're the first seed in the East. Giannis is still Giannis. He's still fantastic. Might even be in contention for the MVP trophy again. Um, the Bucks team, they have the continuity. They have the good system. And they've proven that they've done it before. Brooke so, Lopez literally might win Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. 
So, I mean, a lot of things are going well for the Milwaukee Bucks right now. So, no doubt about it, they deserve to be up in that in, in the contenders. And then the Boston Celtics, although how painful it is for us to admit it, but the Boston Celtics have been great all season long. Uh, they have two great superstar players. They have a good system in place. They have some good depth pieces, good scoring, uh, great defense as well. So, the Boston Celtics have been very, very good this season. I mean, they were just in the NBA Finals last season. So, yeah. they haven't really dropped off. They haven't taken a step down, nothing. So, it's pretty easy to put them in contention along with Milwaukee, for example. And Phoenix, obviously, we know they have arguably, well, on paper, they do have the best starting lineup in the league. So I think those three teams, I think, are probably unanimous across the board for everyone, yeah. not just us. So I do, and I now we wanted, to, we wanted to throw in a few other teams. We did kind of disagree on who we think deserves to be in this bubble. For me personally, I'm going to go with the L.A. Clippers. I think the Clippers are contenders this season for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, they still have a talented duo of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Say what you want about them missing games and all that stuff and not really being healthy. Regardless of the fact, these two, when healthy, when performing well, are a very good and very dynamic duo. They're good on both ends. They can score from basically from all facets of the court. And again, they've, they've proven that they've done it in, on multiple different teams. They're also deeper than any previous year that they've been in with this core. You know, like now, again, they've addressed a bunch of needs at the trade line, as we mentioned in our trade deadline episode. Definitely check that out. But basically, they, they got the, the backup big. They got Eric Gordon. They got Bones Highland. Um, and they even went out and got Russell Westbrook, although that's been kind of a mixed bag so far. But, again, it's a deeper team. And, again, playoff Kawhi is just different, man. Like, we've, I just, we just watched Kawhi, again, play the Raptors the other day, and he absolute stud. Still fantastic. When Kawhi wants to turn it on, he can literally be the best player in the league. That's how good Kawhi Leonard can still be. And we've seen him do it before. And I think if this Clipper team stays healthy and they can work out sort of the Westbrook growing pains that they're having right now, I think they have a good shot of winning the West. So I would disagree with the Clippers being in that A tier and that contention tier. And I'll talk about it a little bit later when we get to our next tier. But the two teams that I have on this list that Hani doesn't are number one, the Philadelphia 76ers. The Philadelphia 76ers, for me, I think have turned a corner. Um, and I think it's really telling when they've been playing so good, but yet they're kind of going under the radar. I think that's a really good sign of a team that in some ways I think has matured past a lot of its initial issues. Um, Joel Embiid now is in his whatever season he is. Tobias Harris has kind of found a better role for himself, though he is a bit up and down. Um, James Harden, this is now, you got over that first year of Philadelphia. So now James Harden has been there for a while and his plays reflected it. You know, he isn't as good as he once was, and he didn't make the All-Star team. But if you look at how he's orchestrating the Philadelphia 76ers, how he's playing on offense, um, you know, he doesn't have to take a ton of shots. He's really going into that playmaking role now. And with a guy like Tyrese Maxey coming off the bench sometimes and being that third scorer or second scorer that they need, um, and just trying to be more comfortable in the new role that he's had to adapt to with James Harden being there, I think the Philadelphia 76ers, if you look at their top seven, um, if you look at the fact that they're top 10 on both ends of the court, I think they're a contender. Um, I wouldn't have them winning the NBA championship, but I think they're firmly in that A category where um, they look like that team now. They look like a different team than what, than they were previously in, in uh, past years. Listen, man, I agree with what you're saying in terms of like, yes, they look better. They've been performing better. Things have looked better for the Philadelphia 76ers as of late. The problem is Joel Embiid and James Harden have not proved it in the playoffs. And that is, it's hard to put them in the conversation with Phoenix, Milwaukee, and Boston because they haven't done it yet before. Neither of them. Both of them have been uh, playoff underperformers. Well, Joel Embiid has always gotten hurt in the playoffs. He's performed well, always gotten hurt. But James Harden has always been a playoff underperformer. And again, the rest of these Sixers players, I mean, do you really trust Doc Rivers in a, in a tight game Well, that's my main. that's my main concern for the 76ers, right? James Harden... In terms of him, his playoff performances, I think it's been overstated, but it is valid. The difference is now I think James Harden doesn't have to play the role that he once did. Now he can play more of the facilitator role. I think you're going to see a much more neutral James Harden in the playoffs without the ups and downs. My main problem is Doc Rivers, and I think everyone else agrees with me on that. And that's the one thing that's holding this team back, unfortunately, for the city of Philadelphia. The other team I have in this A tier is the Denver Nuggets. Similar to what I was saying with the Philadelphia 76ers, but more so with the Denver Nuggets, they look like they've hit the groove. They look like 
they understand how to win now. They, it, it's similar to what you, it's an eye test kind of thing, a fuel test, right? When you look at contenders, especially in past seasons, when you look at teams that have won the NBA championship, there's a difference to how they move. The you know they don't go crazy in the regular season, but you can sense the fact that they understand how to win. I think now for Denver, Denver has always been able to win in the playoffs. The problem with them is that everyone else has been injured besides Nikola Jokic, and he's had to carry. Now, hopefully, with a, fun, a completely healthy team, uh, with a completely healthy Michael Porter Jr., who's been balling, uh, playing probably the best ball of his career, Jamal Murray looks to be back. And now you have a guy like Aaron Gordon, who's playing the best basketball of his career as well. Um, uh, yeah, Aaron Gordon, uh, Bruce Brown was a huge pickup for them. Thomas Bryant was another pickup at the trade deadline, along with Reggie Jackson. You now have a very, very good team. Um, you don't necessarily have that second superstar, but this season, as I said, you don't necessarily need that second superstar anymore because there's no stupid big threes anymore. Again, I'm gonna like it's the same same thing I'm gonna say about Philly that I'm saying about Denver. They gotta prove it. They gotta prove that they're not like Jokic again. He's a back-to-back MVP winner. Might even be a three-time, three, three times in a row MVP winner. And this guy hasn't proved that he's going. He can you know be a, a, the number one guy in the playoffs. You know, yes, he's had some good performances here and there. But again, we gotta see more out of Jokic. I gotta see what Jamal like. I gotta see Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. actually be healthy and step up in the playoff series when they matter. And again, the rest of these Nuggets players that you mentioned, like Bruce Brown. I mean. Can't really shoot. Can't really. How well, I mean, he can shoot. Uh, he just doesn't take that many. But I think with the collection of talent that they have now, um, I think it's a different Denver team than what we've seen before. Yeah. Okay. I mean, fair enough. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll give you those two. But I just I, at the I, end of the day, it's it. not. I'm not saying that Denver's gonna win. I think I would put them in that A tier though. Okay, fair enough. Moving us on into our second tier, and this is the tier that we call the almost there team tier it's a tier where again these are the teams that are are going to be playoff teams for sure they're going to be playoff locks they're just a couple of a couple of pieces away from being a true championship contender possibly winning a couple of rounds yeah exactly uh and i think for us per, the the teams that we can we can agree on that are, are locks for this tier the dallas mavericks uh obviously with Kyrie and luca they're going to be a good team they're going to be a playoff team uh, again, they 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 just they they're gonna suck on defense. That's just we've seen That's it. That's basically it. I think the main problem too uh, with Dallas when I watch them, I see a collection of talent, not a team, not a cohesive. Well, team. they were kind of put together on the fly, like you were saying. Like I mean, but that's what also happens when you have an uninspiring offense led by Jason Kidd, and his kind of default is give the ball to Luca or give the ball to Kyrie and let them take turns. Now we saw that work kind of last year with Jalen Brunson and Luka Doncic but you don't have the defense that you did last year to make up for that kind of one one a one b dynamic and everyone else is just better this year too so. yeah yeah it's tough to see Dallas actually making it to like a Western Conference Finals or even the NBA Finals but again they're going to make the playoffs and they're going to maybe win a round or two I would say the same thing maybe about the Cleveland Cavaliers the Cleveland Cavaliers have surprised a lot of people this year just with Again, with the fit, Donovan Mitchell has just been a seamless fit for them. Um, the team itself, they're a great defensive team. They have a, they have some good depth, good young players. I think the big, the biggest thing with the Cavaliers is that they just don't have the experience. But I think their talent alone will help them at least win a round, I think. I think they'll get out of the first round. But I just can't see them getting past that. Well, they don't have the experience. I don't think Donovan Mitchell is a championship caliber leading player. I think he's a second option. Um, so I don't think the Cleveland Cavaliers can be put in that category with Donovan Mitchell being their best player. I, I just don't think it's possible. But for the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think it's a I think for them it, it's all right. I don't have I don't think they should have a problem with no. being placed in this tier. They're a young team. They have time. They need experience. They're gonna grow. Um and then hopefully in the future you add a couple of pieces, mix up the team a little bit more oh, yeah. and then you can see hopefully a championship contender. And the thing is, this Cavs core is locked up for the long run. Like, they have these guys for the long run, which is why that Donovan Mitchell move was so good. Because now it's like you have this core, you can keep building with these guys moving forward. So you don't have to win it all this season, uh, which is great for them. So Dallas and Cleveland are the two teams that we think are, are locks for this tier. Obviously, as I mentioned, because I didn't have Philly and Denver in the contenders tier, I have them down here in the almost there tier. I just think, again, I kind of mentioned this a little, uh, you know, a little earlier, but I think Philadelphia, they're still missing that experience, that prove me wrong type of thing where 
I need to see James Harden and Joel Embiid show up in the playoffs and absolutely dominate. I need to see them make an Eastern Conference Finals for me to even consider them being a contender. So until then, I can't put them in that category. Same thing with the Denver Nuggets. I got to see Jokic and Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. As a collective, I got to see these guys step up, get to the Western Conference Finals, and actually put up a fight. You know, last time they were there, it wasn't, it wasn't even a competition. So I got to see them up there for, for me to put them in there. But I think that the, the, for me, the last the team the, 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 I think is for sure going to be in this conversation is going to be the Memphis Grizzlies. I know a lot of people, there's a lot of news around in the Memphis Grizzlies, a lot of bad press because obviously they've been running their mouths a lot. And I'm, I'm going to be the first to say, hey, man, if you're going to talk it, you got to back it up. So the Memphis Grizzlies, they got to back it up. But that doesn't d- d- you know, diminish what they've done this season. They've, they're still a good team. They're a great collection of young talent. And I think, again, when healthy... They've shown they, they they can compete with a lot of teams. They play hard. Uh, they have the second-ranked defense in the league. And, again, defense helps a lot in the playoffs. I think, again, they're still not at that championship level, especially in the Western Conference when you consider some of the other teams that we brought up. There's still a few pieces away. But, again, John Morant's very talented. Jaron Jackson's great on both ends. And, again, if you get some of that complimentary scoring from Desmond Bain, maybe a Dylan Brooks you know, becomes that sort of agitator in the playoffs, it could work for them to win a few rounds. But that's about it for the Memphis Grizzlies. I would have to disagree with that. I think the Memphis Grizzlies, and I'll talk about this a little bit more because I don't even have them in the top two tiers. I have them in the next tier that we're going to get to. But I think the Memphis Grizzlies have just shot themselves in their season. Uh, no pun intended, <laughs> but, you know, it, it is what it is, right? They, I, I think, I'll get to this a bit later, but I think the 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 vibes on this team are too off for them to make any significant progress in the playoffs um the teams that i do have in this tier that honey doesn't have is number one the los angeles clippers honey had them in his contender status uh in his contending tier i would have to disagree i think first of all the clippers are too inconsistent at this point there's 20 games left in the season and we're still wondering which clippers team is going to show up on a nightly basis i don't think that screams contender i think that screams a okay cool team that can maybe win a couple of rounds max um, I, I don't think if you're a serious contender, I don't think you can be this inconsistent, this bad from game to game at this point in the season. Um, health issues, honey mentioned it, but I think this is mainly the primary reason why the Clippers have been so inconsistent when you don't know whether Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are going to play, even in the playoffs, you don't know which games they're going to play. It becomes a huge issue. And then you talk about the injury issues they have down the line. You know, Nick Batum himself is a bit older. Vita Zubac has missed a couple of games here and there. And it just becomes a whole team dynamic kind of just breaks apart when you have a role. Guys like Norman Powell, who was playing amazing six man of the year candidate earlier, now with a new role on the team, it becomes hard for role players to kind of find that happy medium. And you've seen their role players struggle for that reason, right? Uh, Norman Powell, Reggie Jackson, when they had him, Terrence Mann going up and down, up and down. It's because you don't have a consistent team that's out on the court. So players don't know what their roles are going to be on a nightly basis. And when you're carrying that same issue into the playoffs, I think it's too late at this point. I, I don't think it's it, they can do this. Um, Russell Westbrook, listen, man, I like Russell Westbrook, but it just is what it is at this point. He's he's a negative on the court, unfortunately. He might have games where he goes off and he has a good game, but by and large, even when his stat lines look good, he's taking a lot away from the team. Teams are literally guarding him in the paint when he's at the top of the key. I think that will depend on how Ty Lu decides to use him in the playoffs, and I think you'll have to be situational with Russell Westbrook. I like I when I was watching the Clippers the other night, I just saw you put Russell Westbrook in different lineups. Like maybe with him without Paul George and Kawhi, actually was pretty good. Him and Terrence Mann were actually dis- disruptors and actually made some good plays. So I I saw a vision of where it could work with Westbrook, but I again it depends on how you use him. To be honest with you, the but, problem with the problem with how you use him is that. The Russell Westbrook narrative creates too much issues for the coach. And we saw that with the Lakers when they should have been playing Russell Westbrook less. And we see that even with the Clippers now. We all knew that Russell Westbrook should not necessarily be starting and playing the minutes that he has been playing. But unfortunately, the whole Westbrook dynamic kind of gets pushed and it kind of creates the second layer of things you need to worry about. And it's not his fault. I think yeah. like, it's just because he's, he's Russell Westbrook. He's a big name. Like it's kind of it's kind of hard to not see not see him and not play him. So I get it. But for me personally, I have some faith in this Clipper team, and I have faith in Kawhi Leonard to be honest. And with I you. have two more uh, teams in this list quickly: the Golden State Warriors. Now, 
as much as we've bashed them, um, this is still very much a lot of the same pieces and a lot much of the same team that they had last year. I think the issue is just for some reason they've sucked on the road. Um, their defense has not been as good this season. I think this is probably the last year of their big three, especially with Draymond Green's contract, uh, you know, being up soon. Um, I think the Warriors have to go down the route that they previously did a couple of years ago, where after KD left, they were kind of in this middle phase of we need to find the right pieces to try to bring this back together with, you know, surrounding Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. And I think it'll take a couple of years, but you have Steph Curry at least in his prime, you can say, for the next couple of years. You have a decent version of Klay Thompson. I think they have to take the same route that they did. And not to mention Andrew Wiggins this season has missed a bunch of time due to, you know, personal reasons, whatever that is. Um, and I think... In terms of me tearing this, uh, the Warriors team in this list, I think there's still a couple of pieces away. I don't think they'll be a contender, but I think there's still a couple of pieces away. I don't think they're almost there, man. I just think, I, I think it's even tough to see them make the playoffs even this season, to be honest with you, based on the way they've been playing. And I'll get to the Warriors a little bit later, but for me personally, I, I can't see them in this tier. And my final team in this tier is the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, I know they're not... Technically in the playoff picture right now in the top eight. Dude, they're barely in the play-in, man. Well, I mean, they're definitely in the play-in. But barely. Um, I think the main, the main thing is that as long as they win the games that they have to finishing out the regular season, I don't think any team necessarily wants to play them in the playoffs, especially AD, the way he's been playing. And we have to think about it this way. The Lakers right now are not the team that they've been for basically the whole season. This is a completely different team that we've seen yeah. in, since the trade deadline has been very damn good, right? And if you get LeBron James back at maybe 70%, you know, he can give you like a 25... He can probably give you 25 in the playoffs with like one ankle, bro. But this isn't like, you know, 33 or 34-year-old LeBron James who could potentially bounce back. You're talking about a 38-year-old LeBron James in year 20 after coming off of multiple years of injuries... I even 70%. Do you really want to risk him getting hurt again? Do I really trust Anthony Davis? Again, I'll talk about we'll talk I'll talk about the Lakers a little bit later on my thoughts on them, but yeah, just like the Warriors, I I can't trust this I can't trust this Lakers team well, right now. Well, I think they're good enough to be in that next tier. But like I said, I don't have them in the championship contention tier, unfortunately. Um now granted if they had a healthy LeBron and AD, I think maybe my position would be different, but I think with the gap that they need to make up now, because of the bad start that they had, um, I think there's a lot of issues with this team uh, that drops them to the next tier for me. Yeah. All right. So, th so that was the almost their tier. Moving us into the early exits tier, or the tier that where these are going to be playoff teams, you know, for the most part. They're going to be playoff teams, but they're probably barely going to make it out of the first round, if that. Like, they're yeah, let's be honest. They're not going to make it out of the first round. I mean, maybe they have a chance to make it to the second round, but we don't have them in that tier that, for example, Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Los Angeles Clippers, uh, you know, as we mentioned before, the other teams. Like, like, this is the tier for like, okay, it's nice. Hey, I made the playoffs, but you're not going to really go anywhere from there. Kind of what it is. Exactly. And the teams that we can obviously agree upon that are going are gonna to be in this category, the first and foremost, the New York Knicks. I'm sorry. Um, they had a good season. You know, as your resident Knicks hater, I'll admit, the Knicks have had a pretty good year, but they won't do anything in the playoffs. Shout out Josh Hart, man. We called that. That was the best underrated pickup of the trade deadline, and we were very much correct. Yeah, it, it was a good pickup for them. They've had a great season, but they're not going to do anything in the playoffs. I, I still do not believe in Julius Randle. I believe in Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart more than I do in Julius Randle. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally telling you this because I've seen Julius Randle play now, and he's too one-dimensional. He's not good defensively. He's barely good with his right hand, and if his shot's not working, he's useless. I mean, dubious handles struck again last night, but uh, I would have to tend to agree with you. Even Jalen Brunson, like Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle have been really good this season. I like Jalen Brunson. I don't, I don't think you can win more than a couple of rounds with them. Barely even a round. It's hard. I like this team is also it's also not deep enough either. Like this Knicks team, like we gotta admit, like even like Josh Hartman was a good addition, but they needed him. Because they needed, they needed another guy to, off their bench to kind of help them out a little bit more. Because they weren't getting anything out of Cam Reddish anyways. And they have a bunch of guys that they don't play. And you know Thibodeau is going to shorten his rotation for sure. If, like, I mean, from the 
seven guys he's already playing, he might throw it into the six. And as much as it pains me to say this, if your third option is R.J. Barrett, you're not going much of anywhere. Oh, yeah. Like, listen, man, team. I love R.J. Barrett, but it's next season he's got to start picking it up, man. Uh, because I don't, I don't want this version to be R.J. Barrett we're going to know 10 years from now. Yeah, and again, the thing is, R.J. is still young, and he's going to have to get there. But again, I, I also don't even trust Tom Thibodeau. I think he's going to run his guys into the ground, as he normally does. So yeah, the New York Knicks, I think, if they're going to make the playoffs, I think they're... they're well, gonna, I think they'll make the playoffs. I don't think that's... Most likely, right. like, numbers, mathematically, they'll make it, but I don't see them getting past the first round at all. The second team would be the Miami Heat. Uh, the Miami Heat, again... Most likely, they will make the playoffs, you know, through the play-in, I think. I, I think they'll, they'll win the play-in games. But the problem with the Miami Heat, they're just too old. Um, they're too inconsistent. And I think, personally, they're going to need a retool in the offseason. They really got to re uh, reestablish what they're trying to do in the long term. And right now, they just can't figure it out. I mentioned it before. There's a disconnect between their best players, right? You have the old guard in Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, versus the young guys in Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. And together, you just don't have a good collection of talent, or good enough as it is, uh, especially this season. Lowry, for his part, unfortunately, I love Lowry, but he's he's cooked. He's like, like what, 36, 37 years old, man? He's, he's, he's old. He's cooked. We, we saw this. This is why Toronto let him go, because he's old. Like, he's just, he's not the same guy. He probably is going to retire soon anyways. And, you know, again, we love Kyle Lowry here. I mean, we, we have that for a reason. But, again... Is he going to be? He's not. He's not helping Miami make it any further than the first round. Uh, yeah. So I think Miami is just not. It's not there. Yeah. And then the, finally, the last team that we agree upon uh, in the early exits here is the Sacramento Kings. Um, shout out to the Kings. They shout ha- out to the Kings, man. They have a fun team. I love watching them play. Again, they they're a fun team. They have great vibes. Shout out to the Beam. That, yeah, that, that should that should like change everything, man. But again, the Kings they're going to break their their long playoff. Kings drought. fans just throw a party. Just, just, en- just enjoy it. Even if you don't win a game in the playoffs, throw a party, bro. Just enjoy it. Uh, it's it's nice that they made it, but man, let's be honest. Like even Kings fans, just admit it. You weren't going to go past this. Like none of you even expected to get to this moment. So just enjoy it for what it is. So yeah. Shout out Mike Brown. I think he's gonna easily win Coach of the Year. Yeah, shout out Mike Brown, man. What a what a resurgence in co- back into the head coaching seat. Like it's shout out to him and shout out to the Sacramento Kings. But most likely gonna be an early exit team. Uh, bringing me to the to the to the team that I added onto this tier. Obviously, Zishan added Golden State into his almost their tier. I still think Golden State is gonna be an early exit team. I think they'll probably make the playoffs because Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are still good enough to help you do that. But it's been a rough season. They've had a lot of health concerns, specifically Steph and Clay and Draymond have all faced injuries. Um, they d- they have no depth at all in the roster. I I don't believe in their depth. They're garbage on the road, which again, like if you're not even gonna get home court advantage in the playoffs, it's not gonna help you that you're a bad road team. And again, I think the only person you can trust in this team is Steph Curry. So if that's the only guy I can trust on the team, I don't see them going past the first round. For me, the team that I'm going to have in this uh, early exit tier, Honey had them in uh, his almost their tier, um, is the Memphis Grizzlies. For much of what I was talking about, I think the vibes with this team are just done. Um, Dylan Brooks, he has a contract. Uh, it's his contract year. He's been up and down, at least very much so on offense. Uh, Steven Adams, I think his injury really exposed this team and the lack of rebounding. Um, a lot of his, the defense was predicated on him as well. So I think Steven Adams' injury has really exposed his team in terms of, uh, you know, the gaps that they do have. And it's been telling because since he's gone down, they've been losing a bunch of games. I don't think their record indicates how bad they've been um, in their last, you know, month, two months, whatever it's been. Um, and as as we talked about, off-court issues, they speak for itself. I think you need a, a cultural break or cultural reset button, I think, at the offseason. I think you need, you just need a break, I think, is what the Memphis Grizzlies need. They definitely need another veteran in the room to control things. But I think, again, I have a little bit more faith in their talent. But, again, like some of their injuries recently, I've kind uh, of put Brandon Clark, too. I, oh, feel, yeah. I feel bad for Brandon Clark, man. Shout Damn. out, uh, fellow Canadian. Hey, man, at least he signed his contract before he got hurt. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I just don't really, I, I think the Memphis Grizzlies need to get to next season. Yeah, maybe, but okay. So that was, so those, those were the early exit teams. Now the, we got to get into the playoff hopeful. These are the teams 
that are clinging on to the little strand of hope that they have left that they can, you know, make it into the playoffs, win the play in, and get into a playoff spot to become an early exit team. Uh, that's I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. That's the rea- <laughs> that's, that's the reality, man. Like that's basically where they are. The teams that we can agree upon that are for sure in this in this tier. First and foremost, unfortunately, our Toronto Raptors are in this tier. Now there's still a chance they're still in the play in. There's a chance they can make the playoffs. They might even be a they might even be a good play in team. Who knows? I mean, I know Masai famously said play in for what, yeah. but let's be honest. That was before he got into the play in. So now it's about we're playing to make the playoffs. But again, Toronto they've looked better since after the Acapulco edition. They visually just look a lot better as a we team. We actually ran a pick and roll. We've been running pick and roll. Like our entire offense now is pick and roll generated, and Jakob has been very good for that. He's matter. been good. He's man. been very good for the team. Um, and like again, they can probably even get home court in the play in the in the play in. Honestly, if they if they get up to the seventh or eighth seed, they can might be able to do it uh, mathematically. And if they go on a win streak, you know they they might be able to do it. But again, the problem with the Raptors has been inconsistent play. It's killed them down down the stretch. Uh, it's kind of how they lost their last couple of games. They haven't been able to get back to five hundred. It's just been kind of one of those rough ones for the Raptors. They really got to reestablish themselves in the off season. Unfortunately, they just look like a typical like eighth seed. Yeah, they do. And again, that's not where Masai wants this team to be. And I don't think that's where the Raptors want themselves to be. So the Toronto Raptors definitely going to be a lock for this category. Second team will be the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Trey Young just got another coach fired. And uh, To be fair, like Nate McMillan, I don't understand how he, he fooled Atlanta's uh, front office because we all know who Nate McMillan is. And he's just... Listen, man. He's I, the definition of average. After coach. that conference finals run, I called it that the Hawks were frauds. And again, y'all just got to listen to me, man. Uh, I, shout out to Atlanta for giving us those uh, Philadel- the Philadelphia series, though. That was fun times, man. That was fun times, man. <laughs> but, like, listen, man. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, the Hawks, they're, they're not going anywhere with Trey Young being your number one guy. This team has a bunch of dysfunction. This team has a bunch of roster holes. And, I mean, DeJounte Murray was supposed to fix a lot of it. And, granted, he's done a better job at covering a lot of these issues up. But it's just it's not a seamless fit. And the rest of the roster, DeAndre Hunter, unfortunately, hasn't been able to take that next step forward. We hoped he would. John Collins, the whole, you know, his his whole situation. Clint Capella's been up and down. So I it's think just, Trey Young's a bad leader. I, I, I don't believe – I never believed in the guy. And I think now Atlanta's kind of regretting training Luka Doncic. Just oh, well, no, they definitely regret like, that. But, yeah, I, it's just, it's just yeah. not – a. Nah. It's seamless. It's just not a great team. Yeah. Uh, next up would be the Washington Wizards. I mean, are we surprised? The Wizards are the definition of mediocrity. And they actually gave their fans hope because they actually started playing well, playing a lot better. And now they're, like, competitive in the play-in mix. It's so like, oh, we might be able to make the playoffs. To do what? Lose in the first round again? Seriously, Bradley Beal, why did you sign up for more of this? You could have gone to a contender and you signed up for more of this mediocrity. I mean, get the bag, bro. I don't hate it, but damn. Your career just is eh, whatever, man. He's making a lot more than I am. Bro. I wish I could. I would. I would do that for like a quarter of no, bro, like a hundredth of what he's making, man. Bro, the 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 Wizards are just media mediocrity. The definition of mediocrity. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, again, after KD and Kyrie were kind of traded, I mean, we really didn't expect this team to be anywhere near as good as they were they were supposed to be. And again, because they had KD and Kyrie early, the record actually reflects that. But Again, they might just slip and fall out of the playoffs. They might even get, hop into the like, during the during the sixteen now in the East. They might slip into the play ins and they might not even make the playoffs. Which is fine because they have a they have a good building block moving forward. You know they have a nice vision. Oh yeah, yeah. Mikael Bridges that looked really good for them, and so was Cam Johnson. I mean, Cam Thomas has kind of fallen out of the rotation a little bit. Well, the problem with Cam Thomas is he's basically there for one reason, and if he's not hitting his shots. He's kind of useless. Yeah, but again, Brooklyn's not really trying to win anymore, so it doesn't really matter. And then uh, the last team that we agree upon would be the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, I mean, in my opinion, they're an average team with not not much else. Like, well, they've been playing much better since like for the last like two like month or two. Uh, Rudy Gobert's definitely gone more comfortable. You can see it. Anthony Edwards, the whole team has gone more comfortable with Rudy Gobert. Anthony Edwards has really started playing better. The main problem for them is that Carl Anthony Towns, who was supposed to be their floor spacer next to Rudy Gobert and their second best offensive player, has been out for basically the whole season. And it's just basically hindered them uh, as a result. So I think hopefully next year we may be able to get a bit better picture of what the Minnesota Timberwolves can actually be. I just think this year it's 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 a washed season. Shout point. out to Anthony Edwards though; he's been, he's been balling out, been great. He's player. been good. I called it. 
Just, just saying. Uh, and for me, the last team that uh, that I I put into this tier, I put in the Los Angeles Lakers. I, yes, they've been playing well. Yes, Anthony Davis has been playing well, and they have a chance to make the playoffs if AD can stay healthy. But how many times have we said if AD can stay healthy? We've said it basically his entire Lakers tenure. The Lakers can be this if AD can stay healthy, and. I just don't have a faith. I don't have faith in that. And I think pairing that with LeBron coming off of another injury, um, where they might they might even rush him back. And for anything, he might not be a hundred percent when he gets to the playoffs. Oh no, I don't think he's gonna be. 100%. Or get to the play in where you have to, things are more intense. Like I just see us. I don't. I don't have faith in this Lakers team to be good enough. And even if they make the playoffs, what are they really gonna do? Like not much. They're probably gonna lose in the first round. And is that really the best way for LeBron to spend his 20th season? Probably not. I mean, similar to what you were saying about Anthony Davis, I think that's why I have the Pelicans uh, in this tier. I just think it's the Zion Williamson thing, right? Um, the Pelicans looked really, really good with Zion Williamson there. He's uh, better than Golden. They were gunning for that first seed, right? And after he got injured, basically... Unfortunately, Brandon Ingram is a really good second option, but he hasn't shown that he can carry a team in the absence of the first option. He also has health concerns, too. And exactly. And he hasn't been there for that long, either. Right? He he hasn't been on the court as uh, as much as you want him to be, either. Like, CJ McCollum has been balling out, but he can't do it by himself. And that's and the, the intention wasn't for him to do it by himself. Otherwise, why would, why would he leave Portland? <laughs> the, the Pelicans, unfortunately, their whole season is basically being derailed. I, I just... You got to look forward to next season at this point, but... I I wouldn't be too hopeful of next season because of the fact that Zion the problems you have right now are not necessarily going to be better next season. They're not fixable problems. I mean, Zion's got to stay healthy. I think him and Anthony Davis are competing to be the new modern day Greg Oden. But like, well, no, Anthony Davis, I don't think is in that discussion because he's done what he's done, right? He he's had his career at this point. Yeah, sure, is it going to be as good as we hoped? No, but he he's done what he's done. Zion sure. Williamson has, I mean, he's been really good when he's been on the court, but unfortunately, he's barely been on the court. Listen, man, the best ability is availability, and right now, that's a struggle for Zion Williamson, and that's holding the Pelicans back. It really is. Um, and, yeah, so that was the playoff hopefuls tier, and the final tier is the bottom of the barrel. Uh, I mean, we're not even going to waste your time in naming these teams. I mean, you, you already know. These are the teams that are tanking. You know, these are the teams that are, in, like, the play-in the the you know the play -in losers and all that. You know, like, you know, we're talking about you know, the Detroit, San Antonio's, Houston's, uh, you know. The Unfortunately, we have Chicago in this mix, too. Cause oh, Chicago. They're just not, they're not good. I have New Orleans in this mix as well. Uh, but, yeah, basically these teams, I mean, they're not going to make the playoffs. They have zero chance of ever like, competing for a championship anytime soon. Um, but, yeah, so those they fall under that tier. So those were our... Uh, you know, NBA tiers uh, for this for this season after the trade deadline. Let us know what you guys think. Do you agree or disagree? Where would you rank certain teams uh, in the in these tiers? I mean, it's going to be definitely interesting. A lot of people are going to have, uh, you know, varying opinions as we did in this, and in, in, you know, going through this exercise. So let us know what you guys think, either on the comment section on YouTube or on social media. Finally, got to get into a quick up and under segment to end off things this week. First and foremost... Are you up or under on the John Morant situation? And for those of you that aren't aware, so John Morant uh, has been in the news recently for all the wrong reasons. I mean, this guy, uh, not only was this guy in reports that he beat up a 17-year-old, uh, pointed a gun at him, but he also flashed a gun on his Instagram Live while he was on the road in Denver, which led people, you know, and then he also got, I think he got into an altercation with a mall cop. I mean, he also, uh, mall security. apparently they also pointed beams at the Indiana Pacers. But the point is, uh, yeah. I think everyone's aware of, like, all this John Moran situation. Um, I mean, I'm under on it because it's just it's stupid, man. What are you it, doing, Like, man? What, what are you doing, man? You're worth, you're about to be worth, like, 300 mil, well, 200 million on top of the however much million. He just got his Nike signature shoe launched. Powerade. Powerade deal. Like, the guy has so much to lose, and literally he just, he just wants to be a, be a thug. And, like, and it's so... He's he's not even from that. You know, like, come on, man. He's it's just it's just it, it ain't worth it, man. Like, honestly speaking, man. Like, what are you even doing? And again, like, you could have gotten in serious trouble with the whole gun and on the well, IG he's live. Lucky the 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 cops couldn't find any. Evidence. He's incredibly lucky because again, imagine you bring that onto a plane. Like, how would you even get it there? I don't know, and I'm not gonna get into it. But I'm just gonna say, like, listen, man. You're better than this. I think the best person who sp I've heard speak on this subject was be Shannon Sharp. 
he spoke on this subject because he's seen a lot of uh, former athletes and and I mean he's definitely seen worse because he's he's in the he was in the NFL yeah the so football, <laughs> football like, players are a lot worse and even he's saying he's like yo bro you're 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 this ain't you so stop trying to be it you and know at this saying? point like I I don't like the fact that people are like oh he's a young kid but bro the guy's like twenty three like you're not a young kid at this point you have and the, he's a father man like it's not even like you're some like single like kid or whatever like the guy's a dad so. Yeah. At this point, it just it's stupid. You got to get your priorities straight. And I think that's where the NBA has got to really improve on. Like, these young players are getting way too much money at a very young there has age. To be a di- uh, there has to be a balance between what David Stern was and what Adam Silver is. There yeah. has to be some sort of balance between that. Yeah. Uh, next up, are you up or under on the whole Fred Van Vliet getting fined 30 k for his uh, epic post-game rant about Ben Taylor and refereeing in general? I'm up on it, man. I think it was 30k worth spent, man. Like, like, man, like. I'm sorry, man. First and foremost, I'm surprised he didn't get the max of 50k. He got only 30. So, I'm just saying, more players might might try to jump on this too. But second off, he's right. Like, these officials are getting out of hand. And I'm going to call back to the Raptors game against the Denver Nuggets. And now again, this this has some bias because I am a Raptor fan, and my team did lose. Scott Foster special. Scott Foster literally decided that game, you know, with his decision making. I'm sorry, you eject Scotty Barnes for doing literally nothing, man. Like he did nothing to anybody. Like it was the smallest thing in the world. But Scott Foster got offended, kicked him out, awarded four straight free throws, and that was the game. Mathematically, it was over. And I think this is a problem for the NBA that Adam Silver needs to address as soon as possible. Like this is this is ridiculous, and these refs are getting too out of hand. Even the technicals were saying, like, what are these? Some of these BS. Like Jordan Poole, like Yo, jo- that was crazy. I was man. like, well, what did he? What? I'm Jason like, what? Tatum taken has gone two technicals this season, where he got them for clapping his hands. Like again, like, I get it. The refs are trying to protect themselves, but listen, man, you gotta have some thicker skin than this, man. Listen, like, they're I'll, athletes playing in a competitive game. Emotions are running Refereeing high. Refereeing is a tough job. And I'm willing to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. All these refs, I'll no. give them. I'll give them be- the benefit of the do doubt your job that right. they're they're trying to do their job better. Except for Scott Foster, I don't give him the benefit of the doubt because, bro, the guy we all know what he bro, is. Bro, okay. throw Tony Brothers in that mix too because I don't. Okay, but I don't bro, know what this guy is. Listen, man. Tony Brothers is not on the level that like all the stuff that Scott Foster did. We know like the guy shouldn't even be in the league, but right. he, he's in the league comeback, because though. he has some good info on on somebody in the league. Um, but yeah, I. Shout out, Fred. Uh, I think all the players should pitch in and pay that fine for him. Uh, finally, are you up or under on Pau Gasol getting his jersey retired finally by the Los Angeles Lakers? Absolutely up. I mean, shout out to him. Shout out to the Lakers for doing it and also putting his jersey next to Kobe's, which is the right thing to do. Laker legend. I mean, not much more to say, man. This guy's an international. Like, He's going to be a ho- guaranteed Hall of Famer. Um yeah, not much more to say. I mean, Powell's just been great. And shout out Jimmy Butler for coming between <laughs> between days because uh, he had a game the next day. He came on Powell's uh, retirement just to sh- just to support his teammates. So shout out Jimmy Butler for that one. Yeah. So shout out to Powell, man. The Lakers won't have those two championships at all without Powell Gasol. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So shout out Powell Gasol and shout out the Lakers for doing it. But yeah, man, with that, that concludes this week's episode. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely subscribe to the show on all the various platforms. You can find us at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and of course on YouTube. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss more great content from us in the future. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will be getting into more playoff stuff you know, in a little, in the next little bit, so definitely stay tuned for that. But follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Upletter and Under Podcast, Facebook.com slash Up and Under Podcast for all the latest updates whenever we post a new episode or reaction to news as they occur. So definitely follow us there. We'll also be posting some some clips and some exclusives on our Instagram page as well. So definitely follow us there for, some, for, for, for don't miss out on those. Uh, also check out our website upandunderpodcast.com. It's our central hub for the show. It's a place where we write blog posts with every single episode. So if you don't have time to listen or watch the full thing, you can read about it on our website. Every episode we post is posted with the video, audio, and the written version all in one place. So definitely check that out. We've even done so. And yeah, man, pretty hyped for the playoffs. Hoping the Raptors can make it, but this might be the best playoffs we've seen in a while. It's going to be very competitive, and I'm I'm excited to see who who wins. I'm really I'm really first round matchups are going to be great. Oh yeah, this is going to be a this going to be a fun playoff. But uh, yeah, man, without that, that concludes this week's episode. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Easy.